Hello YouTube and welcome to our 50th and long time missed tutorial. Um, this tutorial hasn't been uploaded for a long time and I, there's a paragraph in the description explaining why. I'm not going to go into it in this video because it'll take too long and then it'll be a nightmare. So let's get straight into it. Last tutorial we did a day and night sequence. So um, the time ticks when it's 30 seconds to 60 it's night time. When it's 10 to 30 it's daytime. So I was thinking, let's add something cool to it. Let's add our own lights to it. So when it's daytime, the sun's out. But then when it's nighttime, the sun's gone. So what do we do for lights? Street lights. So we'll add some street lights. And what we can do is eventually add um, proper street lamps and stuff. But from now, I've got the new Unity 4.0. So it's new, it's great good, we've got a new layout. But one annoying thing is when you're learning is the interface changes. It's not very helpful for learning. And... Um, we need to change it back. So what you can do is if you go up to here and see it, if you click tall, it goes back to how we used to have it. But then if you look at the project, it's backwards kind of thing. Like it's two of them and we need to get rid of that. So if you just click these three lines here and tick one column layout, boom, fixed. We've got old Unity back. So it's really, really good. We will be using the new features in the new Unity soon, but for now we're not going to use them. So We've got our character here again. Um, apologies for any lags in this tutorial as well for some strange reason my recorder's acting up. But yeah, so what we can do as well is up here, if we choose save layout, and we'll just call this my layout, and click save. As you can see, now when we change it, so we'll go to default, then we click my, lay my layout, and there we go. We've got our exact layout again. So it's really good. So to begin doing these street lights, at first we need to get our street lights working. So if we zoom out and see, we should have around five street lights. So if we go to landscapes, not landscapes, floor, point lights, we have five. There we go. So we've got them. Now what do we need to do? First we'll rename to rename them to something more appropriate. So we'll just call it street underscore lights. There we go. And not the funny squiggles. So we've got them all street lights. Let's stick them in their own game objects as well, just to make sure they're safe. So we'll call this street lights. I've put no underscore in this one. And we'll drag it into floor and drag all our street lights into there. So we've got that. It's really good. So what we can do is on the range of that, we'll just turn them off for a minute. So there, we've got a completely pitch black thing. It would be good, but it won't be very helpful. So what can we do for it? Well, we add a sun now. So if we go to game object, create other, and we could use a directional light, but the reason is, the only way you can change this is by rotating it. And, like, it's a bit awkward to get the rotations in coding. Cause so what we're going to do is we're not use one of them. Well, instead, we'll use a point light. And you're thinking, we use point lights for street lights, what's the point using it for that? But if we drag it up into air, say, around here, and increase the range to 100, 1,000, there we go, we now have a very, very bright sun. So if we just place it there, we can see we have a sun. It's lit up our whole game, and it's really helpful. So there we go, our amazing game. What well, looks like crap at the moment, but yeah. So what we're going to do is rename this to the sun. We'll keep it as one word. And what we'll do is just put it into the floor again, so the lights all together. Street lights and sun. There we go. So... What we need to do now is go to our weather script because the weather script already keeps track of what time it is and what material it is. What's the point creating another script to do the variables if we can just stick it in there? It does seem a bit illogical. So we've got that with our new fancy icons in Unity 4. So if we double click this and open this up, when it decides to load, there we go. So we have this. It's got all our day materials and everything. It's already there, so we don't need to create this again. So what we're going to do is basically need it to say, store all the lights in the game, of, in this Unity engine, well, in our level, into a, an array. Then for every array it's got, um, check whether it's day or night and turn it on or off. So it's really, really simple if you know how to do it. But this is going to feature some new code, You are, well, somewhat some new code. You've Some new code, but then another code, we're going to be using it on itself, and then you'll see why. So what we're going to do first is just create a very a function and we'll just call this light checker like so. And then here what we're going to do is make it check for whether it's day or night. So easiest way to do this is first we're going to create a variable called lights 
can be called anything you like. And this is going to be equal to game object dot find. And now this is where you'd usually put the name of it. So if we just put street underscore lights, you'd think it would find every street lights in it, but it won't. It will only find the first one it finds, then it will stop, even if you put it in a for loop. So instead, we're going to use tags. Now, tags is basically a secondary name. So, um, say if we gave a car an, a name so called this, where's it gone? Call this the Batmobile, call this the Patriot, and call this the police car. But we wanted them all to be a car. So we'd assign it a tag, and every time Unity would find it, anything with a tag, it would change all at once. And it's basically a long list of tags. However, as you'll see in a minute, there is like one tag. So what we're going to do is select one of our streetlights, and we'll just go up to tag. And as you can see, I've already added it because that's where it, the tutorial's messed up. But what you're going to do is go to add tag. And going to get rid of that. And what we're going to do is in element 0, if you can't see it, just untag it. We're going to call it street lights. There we go. So we'll copy that as well so we get it right. And so what we're going to do is go back to here and select all these and make it street lights. Boom. Now all these are tagged as street lights, which is really good. We don't need to tag the sun because on that one we can just game object that fine because there's only one sun. Unless you're having multiple suns, then you might need to tag it. But yeah, what we'll be using as tags for in the future as well, um, we'll be using layers as well in the future. You'll see why, because I've got a surprise tutorial coming up soon, um, about 10 tutorials down the line. But yeah, so we can go back to here now, and instead of gameObject.find, we can type gameObject.find game objects with tag. So basically, you don't need to remember that code that much. Personally, I've not used tags that much only for things like this, but that's it. So where's the thing what's got the street lights of that? which it has, then it'll find it and it'll store it in that variable as a, an array. So what we can do is create a for loop now, for, and what you do is, do is create a variable and call it something. So we'll just call it street lights. But now what we're going to do is basically say for every street, for every light or object in here, perform this action. So it's basically a big if statement. So for, 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 var street lights in lights so basically that says exactly what you think it says so it creates a variable called street lights and street lights is one of every variable in here and because it's going to run it multiple times it'll keep running it and running it and running it until it's done done our, all our lights which is six so what we can do in here is type if render settings dot skybox so basically checking what skybox it is so if it's day material uh, there. If it's day material, then what does it need to do? Well, first it needs to disable the range on the street lights. So here, the range, what we had originally, was 200. 200 was good, so why change it? So we're going to type street lights, so the variable which we've just created in here, dot light, so we're going into its properties here, dot light, dot range, so we're going into its range property, and what we're going to set it to. We'll set it to zero because it's daytime, our lights don't need to be on. But now what do we do about our sun? So we can type game object dot find the sun because we've got our sun dot light dot range equals a thousand. That's it. So now every time it's daytime, it's gonna shut the street lights off and keep the sun on. And it'll run this multiple and multiple over and over and over again. So it's really good. So if we copy that and paste it below change this to an else if statement because we don't want it checking whether it's um, day or night, day and night at the same time because that will be more processing power. So if it's the night material, what do we want it to do? Turn the street lights on and turn the sun off, like so. What we can eventually do as well is incorporate a moon to it or something like that, it would be really cool. So that's good for now, that would work, but will it work? I'm going to give a cookie to anybody who can comment right now. Go on, comment and say why this won't work. Do you know? Come on, you do know deep down. I'll tell you. Function update hasn't been called. This one here hasn't been called yet. I know you know it. You can have a cookie anyway. A virtual cookie for you all. So in here, we're going to type light checker there. And the reason we're putting it in here is because every time this for loop runs, which is pretty much every time that changes, well, pretty much 
every millisecond, it's going to check this, if it equals 40, 50 or 0. As soon as it does, when it changes it to night time, it's going to check what the light is. And if it is night time, then it just changes that. Simple. So, we can copy that again, and we also want to check it when it's in daytime as well. So now that's done, we can test it. So let's see. I'm sorry this video is a bit less quality as usual. Um, my record, what I'm actually trying to use, is messing up for some reason. Um, I'll show you a preview of that later. But as you can see, it's night time at the moment, and all our street lights are on, and the sun's off. So if we walk around for a minute, this, I've got no way to tell what time it is. <laughs> something random blocking me there. Got something hidden there. So when's it going to be daytime? Come on, time's ticking. You should see it. The light should come on really brightly. Boom, there we go. Street lights have been turned off and the sun's on. And just a way to check this is if you go pause it and go to the sun, a thousand street lights, zero. So that's it. It's all good. So that's our basic street lights. I hope you liked it. Um, we've got a couple more tutorials coming up soon. Um, again, sorry for the long.